All right, we are back. Uh, we are back with Sean St. Jock of postingandtoasting.com. He does the um, Shock Jock podcast on, on that network and on, on our sister site. I'm, I'm with brightsideofthesun.com, so I know all about you guys at Posting and Toasting on the SB Nation side. And then within the podcasting ranks, uh, we're also kind of along the same vein there. Um, so let's get into this, Sean. Uh, I know you guys are just Oh, you guys are so sad. Did you guys host a funeral, <laughs> any funeral profession or procession when Alfred Payton uh, signed on with a different team? Yeah, I don't know if there were any, uh, I don't know if there's anything like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I think there's no secret um, that Knicks fans are, are pretty excited uh, to see him go. <laughs> um, I hate to put it like that, uh, especially with, uh, you know, being on a son's podcast here, but uh, <laughs> no, Trust I, I, me, look, we don't mind. He played 19 yeah. games for the Suns a few yeah. years ago and about three games in, we had that same feeling. <laughs> yeah. I, I think they, um, you know, listen, I think Tibbs uh, really trusted him, you know, especially with the fact that, you know, the Knicks brought in Emmanuel quickly. He wasn't really ready yet to kind of jump into that role. Um, and obviously Derek Rose, despite what we saw at the end of the season and more particularly, and then in the playoffs, um, he was trying not to, you know, overuse him, obviously, as we saw, uh, he kind of had to, as the season went on, just because of the inconsistency of, of Alfred Payton. And, um, you know, I, I was just checking his stats, you know, before I came on and, and he actually, you know, played the most games he's played for the Knicks. Since 2017, 2018, it's been four years since he's played that many games in a season. However, he played the least amount of minutes per game during yeah. those games since 2017, 2018. And it just because he, and I was a little surprised to see this, but his turnover numbers are the lowest they've been, but they were just really poorly timed turnovers mm. in games. And he was he was as inc inconsistent as it gets. And, and that kind of led Knicks fans to, not exactly, uh, you know, be rolling over in their beds at night when uh, when the Knicks weren't going to bring him back. So, but but Knicks yeah. fans are are happy about it because, and I'm happy about it to be fair because you add Evan Fournier, you add Kemba Walker, uh, and listen, Kemba Walker has not exactly been consistent for the Celtics. But the hope is that there'll be a big improvement over the losses of Nilakina and Peyton. But listen, I think Peyton, you know, would potentially flourish with a deeper team and, and the Suns potentially have that. So I, I think that the positive spin is that the Suns are deeper in the backcourt, arguably than the Knicks are. Um, and I think that with a specific role being placed on him, he could potentially flourish on a, a team that's hoping to get back to another NBA finals with all of the horses back in the stable. So I think that, you know, I, I, I try to be an optimist as far as these kind of things, especially because I'm with you, but um, yeah, to be fair, it, it, I, I just, I can't tell you how many times I, I saw on social media, although, you know, it's tough to read that social media at times, but um, yeah, the Knicks fans got very frustrated that Tom Thibodeau would continue to start him in particular, <laughs> Alfred Payton. Um, despite the fact that, you know, even early in the playoffs, he wasn't getting nearly as many minutes when he started. But I think at some point, Tom Thibodeau felt the need to put in Derrick Rose as the starter and just play him his normal minutes from that starter's position. And to be fair, he was the best player on the floor for us in the playoffs. I mean, there's just really no oh, question yeah, about Rose that. Derrick Rose was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Julius Randle really struggled. And I, I think that the Knicks needed a – a presence at the point guard position to, to not only dish it, but score it because nobody else was able to do it consistently. And specifically Alfred Payton was, was really the one that got the brunt of that from the fan base. So yeah, I think that there's definitely positives for the Suns fans to take, but I just think that, um, you know, don't be surprised if you get something similar to what you've had, because he has been, he's been inconsistent. He's had, got a few more yeah. years under his belt, but He's definitely he's definitely been extremely inconsistent. Uh, We're not, in this, yeah. In this time with the Knicks. 
we're not dying for positives. So yeah. don't worry about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> just for those who haven't looked at Alfred Payton's stats, he's yeah. really, con- as far as if you look at his raw stats, he's pretty consistent. He's going to give you about 10 points a game. Yeah. He's going to give you about you know half a dozen assists. He had his career low on assists this past year per game. Pretty close to it, if not. Yeah, 3.2. Every other season of his career between six and a half, seven point two um assists per game. Like extremely consistent. He got fewer minutes and had fewer assists this past year in, in Tom Thibodeau's offense. But when the playoffs came around, the reason you didn't see, you don't remember Alfred Payton being on the Knicks, because that might be for Phoenix Suns fans, the first time you saw a Knicks game uh was when they played in the playoffs. And Alfred Payton played a grand total of 13 minutes in two of those games. So that's why, because he just fell out of the rotation as, as as Sean is, is pointing out to us. Um, We're not that we're not excited about Alfred Payton as a player, uh, but we are thinking that he's got a little bit better chance of running a solid offense when campaign and Chris Paul are on the bench. And last year, Monty Williams turned to Etwan Moore as the third string point guard. And Etwan Moore has never been a third string or any string point guard. I don't think in his career, maybe high school, but you know, that's that's a long, long time ago. So would you would you think uh, and you probably haven't seen much of Etwan Moore in the past, but would you say that Alfred Payton is probably a good Break glass, break glass in case of emergency twice, kind of guy. That's an interesting question. I remember Etwan Moore from college. He had a great career at Purdue, in particular, um, and and I got to see a little bit of him there. Um, I know he played with the Celtics for a bit, and you know, I, I think he, for where he was picked, did did rather well. I think, but I, I think when you look at Alfred Payton. Um, I guess my I guess my answer to that is I really hope so because it's it's not a tough role to fill, mm-hmm. and I, I think with less pressure on him, I, I think he could do well with a team where the expectations for his play are lowered. You know, he was expected to do quite a bit, especially during the regular season mm-hmm. for the Knicks. And starters' minutes in New York matter, and if you don't do well in those minutes, you're going to feel the heat, especially with the Knicks. So I I like to think that with a championship caliber team in a lesser role that, that, yeah, I I think he should be able to do that. But um, then again, you know, this was his first playoffs this past season and he wasn't able to, to really make an impact. So I guess you could look at it both ways, but I'd like to think that he could, and I know I I don't I don't always fit you know I should say I'm one of the few people that probably fit into this category but I'm kind of pulling for him he's a former Nick I, you try to pull for former Knicks in, in a certain regard especially when they don't go to rival teams so I, I think I'd like to see him do well he, he always fought hard for the Knicks I just I just don't think he always um, gave the gave enough performances in a row to to really make an impact enough to stay sure. with the Knicks long term. So I, I think yeah, we're just hoping it's going to be an interesting small, one on that small role. We're just hoping yeah. he's, he's a guy who, who doesn't look, we're, we've dealt with Frank Kaminsky for the past couple of years and yeah. he is the he is the picture of inconsistency. Uh, <laughs> what's, what's hilarious is that Frank, whenever Frank starts, everyone's like, Oh my God, the world is going to, you know, the sky's falling and all that. And so we've already got our guy like that. However, Frank is just so, so personable, so friendly that it's really hard not to like him as a person and root for him. It's just when he's actually on the court. I mean, my (laughs) my favorite, not my favorite thing, but the thing I find myself doing all the time is just going, Frank, you know, stop doing that. Um, (laughs) Is Alfred Payton likable? I mean, obviously the fan, look, look, the fan base didn't want him starting because Derek Rose has a cult following that grows and yeah. grows and grows. And Emmanuel quickly was just so fun to watch as a rookie. And there was frustration. I'm sure that Thibodeau wanted to bring quickly along slow, more slowly than quickly uh, and throughout the season. And maybe he'll take those reins off this next year on, on the, on last year's rookie there. So that I can see why the fans would turn on Peyton. Uh, 
we've got actually last year, year ago, we had um, Elia Kobo, who was a former bot- top of the second round pick, bottom of the first, top of the second. Anyway, Monty Williams, for some reason, was playing starting Elia Kobo two years ago. Um, to Elia Kobo got way too much time as the uh, backup point guard, and people were frustrated because they wanted to see rookies and stuff like that. So I get it. We uh, Do you think that uh, long, really long story for a short question, um, do you think that does does Alfred Payton have any kind of uh, his personality where people just hope for him to succeed, or is he kind of like a grumpy, or what, what's his personality? Tell me about that. I, I wouldn't say it's really either. I, I, I don't know. I, I think he he tended to go under the radar. I think in that regard, in New York, I think pretty that quiet. he's pretty he's pretty professional. I think he's just he just kind of goes out and does his work. And you know, I, I think people liked Emmanuel quickly right away because of the way he kind of expressed himself on mm. the court and things of Endearing. that nature. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, there's a couple of uh, moments where, you know, he makes a long three and he just kind of skips around the court and he's smiling and he's enjoying himself and, um, you know, during big moments in games. And I, I think Nick fans right away love stuff like that. And yeah. not that, not that, yeah, I wouldn't even say that's a knock against Alfred Payton. I just think that that's his personality. I think he wants to get down to business and, um, I wouldn't even say that that hurt him. I really just think it came down to the performances on the court. And and like you said, the fact that Derrick Rose emerged the way he did and Emmanuel quickly, uh, despite, you know, not doing as well in the playoffs, you could argue any, all the Knicks besides Derrick Rose didn't do as well there. So he did so well during the regular season quickly did. So I think that that really – is what forced Knicks fans to be frustrated more with Alfred Payton is that they knew they could do better Mm -hmm. on their own team. And they wanted to see that and what that looked like on the court. I think the, the thing is, is, you know, the Knicks split the first two games of that series with Payton getting minutes. And, and I think by the time he got to game three with Derek Rose picking up more of the load, it was kind of too late. Atlanta kind of already got the momentum in that series and it kind of avalanched from there. And, and despite Derek Rose playing so well, the rest of the se- the series, um, the Knicks needed Julius Randall to step up. And, and, right. and the fact that he never did, um, and, and it, you know, Atlanta really keyed in on him. Yeah. You know, they put mm. a lot of attention on him throughout the entire series and, and Randall didn't handle it as well as we had hoped. So the hope is that he'll obviously learn from that. Mature from that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and uh, I think that the additions of Fournier and Walker are helpful for Julius Randle as well. Those are guys that have been through those kind of situations in the playoffs before, specifically Kemba Walker. So that, that's a big hope for next season. But just going back uh, to, to your question, I just think that um, it, it's really down the middle. I, I think it just came down to the performances more than anything else as far as that's concerned. Sure. One more question on Alfred, then I'll ask you a general, more of a Knicks question overall. Um, on Alfred, the w- the one thing the Suns really, really struggled at was getting to the rim and getting to the line. And Alfred Payton is actually somebody, and maybe it's because his jump shot is so bad that he uh, drives to the to the paint. What? How would you describe his attacking game and getting to the rim? Yeah, it's good. I, I think that's probably one of the strongest parts of his game. Um, he can certainly, you know, especially when he's going well, when he's, when he's right, he does that very well. He can penetrate, he can get things going for teammates and and can get to the basket. I just don't think he, he did that enough at times. And, you know, listen, it's, it's, I, I, I hate to even say it, but it's the truth. Uh, It's, it's the modern NBA, uh, Mm -hmm. NBA players need to shoot threes. NBA players need to get around screens and get open for looks and, it's not really Alfred Payton's game. I don't think it really ever was. Uh, I think that was one of his biggest knocks coming out of Louisiana Lafayette. Now, I guess Louisiana, but the, the Raging Cajuns, obviously. Mm. And um, it, 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 it's definitely improved vastly. He's definitely put the work in. I, I just don't think it was consistent enough to, to warrant being a starting point guard. And sure. I'm, the hope for the Suns, obviously, is that with this smaller role, 
and doing that very well, being able to penetrate, get past a defender one-on-one -on -one and possibly distribute or get to the basket and draw a foul or, or make a bucket, that that is something that he can bring to the table. And I think that I, I, co I go back to this because I think it's really massive that there's so much less pressure on him to do well with Bonnie mm -hmm. Williams and Phoenix. I just, I just feel like, I think he could do well. I, I think there's a chance that he could really fit that role and be a nice depth piece for the Suns. I, I just don't think it, with the Knicks, especially now with what they've added, that first of all, that he'd get enough minutes at this point, but also that uh, that he'd be able to, you know, after what happened last season, and I'm not sure he'd be able to fit with what the Knicks are trying to do moving forward. So I, I think that this is kind of a nice situation for Alfred Payton to possibly get another chance at it and, and go on a possible even deeper playoff run with a team that I still think in, in a deeper West seems like it gets deeper every year out there, but yeah. um, it's they a could crazy still, West. <laughs> yeah, they could still potentially make a deep run again. And I think Alfred Payton would flourish. Or I should say relish in the chance to flourish in with that kind of a team and that kind of a system. Well, the great thing is the Suns aren't going to be relying on him, as you say. You know, he, right. does, he doesn't have the pressure. If he does uh, have some big minute games, it's going to be short term. I mean, you know, knock on wood, nothing disastrous happens uh, with the Suns health wise, and, and his 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 appearances will be few and far between. And having having Chris Paul there to help him, mm -hmm. I, I mean, he we've seen him time and time again with younger players or inexperienced players when it comes to the playoffs just elevate their game and yeah. <laughs> just having him around Alfred Payton, I feel like would just do wonders for his confidence, his skill and his demeanor on the court. I, I, I feel like that alone is a huge deal. The Knicks obviously have nobody like that on their roster even now. So I think right away, if, if Alfred Payton can form a good relationship with CP three, that's already a huge boost for Phoenix, but that's just, that's just Chris Paul. He does that everywhere he goes. Yeah, he does. And I'm sure Phoenix is absolutely thrilled to continue to have him uh, for, for the foreseeable future, at least for the rest of his career, hopefully. For sure. So the Knicks went 41 and 31 this past year. They made it to the, uh, in the playoffs there. They did pretty well. I mean, they lost in, in five games, but it was, it was a big triumph, I think, for the Knicks to get into the playoffs after having come into the year with, Tom Thibodeau's job may be on the line a little bit. And then all of a sudden the team responded in the most uh, advantageous Thibodeau way possible. They had the third ranked defense in the league that covered for the 23rd ranked offense. And it was really a Thibodeau team. How do you feel about them coming into this second year? Do you feel that better? Same? What do you think? I feel great, honestly. And I, and I, as a Nick fan, I almost hesitate to say that. Um, yeah, you don't want to jinx it. <laughs> yeah, there's been so many years uh, where I have felt not this good, to be fair, but close to it in the last mm -hmm. 10 years. And um, not recently, but the, the past 10 years, you feel you feel great at times. And then 30 games in, you're looking forward to the draft, basically. Oh, yeah. Suns fans are so, so familiar with that. We're we're yeah. actually still crossing our fingers whenever we say anything positive, too. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, it's that. It's that. Uh, it's the hope yeah. that can kill you at times. Yes. But I, I, I feel really good about it, just because um, I, last year was so unexpected. I think going into it, even with Tom Thibodeau being an exciting hire, you know, right off the bat, you know, coming off of a a nightmare season with Fizdale and Miller, uh, who just didn't do anything to to get you excited and. Um, completely, you know, kind of threw the season away when there was a little bit of expectation around David Fisdale. And it just never really materialized by, by really any stretch of the imagination. Nothing stood out. Nothing was positive. Mike Miller came in. I think there was a brief positivity with him, but he was never going to be the long-term option. And Tom Thibodeau comes in and completely changed the culture. And you saw that slowly but surely develop as the season went on. And I think that what he got out of Julius Randle, what he was able to get out of Emmanuel quickly, what he's gotten out of RJ Barrett. And now the biggest question mark around the Knicks has been the depth of the backcourt 
And those have been the two biggest offseason additions. They've also addressed that in the draft, getting Miles McBride out of West Virginia, getting Quentin Grimes out of Houston. Both are, are, are Thibodeau guys, but they also fit big needs on the roster. And then Fournier and Walker, I, I listen, I, I know everybody, you know, it's a classic Nick thought to want to go for the big star and, and, and it's New York and you want to address that. And I, I don't blame Knicks fans for feeling that way. It still feels like the Knicks are a piece or two away from contending for a championship 100%. Mm -hmm. But this is a team that can definitely win a playoff series or two potentially this upcoming season if it all goes the way it's supposed to go. I, I think one of the biggest moves the Knicks made was re-signing Nerlens Noel and continue to have that anchor defensively that's so crucial. And then you bring in, or you bring back a Mitchell Robinson who was hurt for a good chunk of last season that is really going to be the future, hopefully, of this team defensively with uh, Coach Tibbs' system. I, I it, It's a long answer, but it's an exciting answer because I just, I, I'm so happy where the Knicks are at. I, it feels like there's a future for this team. It feels like the next five years could be competitive basketball again for the Knicks. And that's really, that. that's why last season was so exciting. You know, obviously losing the way we did to the Hawks was was frustrating. You know, it's not fun seeing Trey Young take a bow at MSG. Oh, man. And and uh, take the Reggie Miller role on. But He's a new villain. You know? He totally is. Uh, yeah. He went to a WWE on the road. event yeah, recently. Yeah, I saw that. Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> continue to rub our noses in it, but fair play. You know, he totally Dude needs a haircut, man. First thing, first and foremost. Good lord. But well, anyway. uh, he's you know he's balding a little <laughs> bit, so I you know, but he's a great player. You know, there's no doubt about that. He outplayed us and do it like deserves. the rest of us. When you get when you're yeah. going bald, just shave it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's so young, young you know. I'm sure he, maybe <laughs> he's in a little bit of denial, but I, I, I listen. He's so good. And I, and I think that the offseason yeah. additions we made are hopefully going to, you know, put us past them. I think that's the hope. And if we meet them again, you know, to be fair, we dominated them in the regular season, but the playoffs are a different animal and, and they made the right adjustments. And I think Nate McMillan deserves a lot of credit for what he was able to do to Julius Randall in the postseason. So they're a good team. And, and, I, and I like to think that we, we are now right there with them. Uh, with the additions we've made and um, for the first time in eight or nine years since Mike Woodson was in charge, the Knicks are competitive and the Knicks could make some noise in the postseason. And to be honest with you, Dave, it's a beautiful thing. I smile anytime I talk about the Knicks and I can't Isn't tell you nice? the last time the la I can't tell you the last time I felt that way about the Knicks. It's, it's, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. And for for because the Knicks mean you know listen it's a Yankee town I'm a Yankee fan probably first but in New York it's just a different in, in the tri-state area in general it's a different vibe when the Knicks are good it's just a totally different thing and honestly you know people were throwing around the the question even you know is is the Knicks winning a playoff series bigger than the Nets winning a championship the answer is <laughs> yes it is. Oh, it's a bigger deal. The Nets are not really that relevant in New York. I, and the even Knicks with three of the top 10 players, even, even with Durant, even with Kyrie, even with James Harden, even with Blake Griffin throwing dunks down again, it's the Knicks. The Knicks dominate the town. And even during the playoffs last season, people are, you know, posting pictures on social media in New York and it's all Knicks fans. Knicks fans are everywhere. And I, it's just great to see that pride back in the team. It's a classic Nick team, right? As well, the way Tibbs plays the game, yeah. it, it harkens back to those '90s Knicks and Pat Riley and, and Van Gundy, and, and it's it's beautiful to watch. It, it, it's you know just that one playoff win. You know, obviously the Knicks fans overreacted a little bit going outside the garden and almost throwing a parade. I will admit that was over a kill, <laughs> but. It, it just shows you how much we've been waiting for this again. And yeah. the garden was amazing. I, I, on my podcast, I just, cause I couldn't go obviously, but I just wanted to, I just kept thanking the fans because that went because it just felt like the garden again, to a certain extent, obviously COVID had something to do with that, but just how loud it was. I remember the OB top and dunk mm. in the second game and, 
just watching that on TV, you know, I, I, and I've been to the garden for big games, whether it's been for the Knicks or um, for college games or, or something like that. And it's just, it, there's no arena like it. There's no venue like it. And when it's loud, I, I mean, you, you, the place can, it, it shakes, you can feel it in your chest, you know, how loud it gets. And, and there's, there's moments over the years where, you know, you feel like the roof's going to blow off the place. I bet that's what it felt like when Toppin had that alley-oop dunk. And um, we've missed that for the Knicks. We've missed that for so, so long. And I feel like the last moment we had was that Shumpert put back dunk against the Pacers way back in like, was it 2013 or 2014? And um, we haven't had anything like that in a long time. And obviously the way we went out was disappointing with the way we got to the four seed. But I, I, I think expectations are a little bit higher. You know, they're managed expectations, but they're expectations of a, you know, positive, competitive, hard fought New York tri-state area kind of team again. And I, I think that's all Knicks fans are hoping for. And obviously the goal is to go a step further and win a playoff series and maybe surprise some people and, and make a little bit of a run. But um, it's just fun to say the Knicks are good again, consistently yeah. good again. And the only thing I could say is it's just, it's a beautiful thing to smile <laughs> when you're talking about the Knicks again. We've missed that in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. I recently saw um, a cr uh, when I was gaming or scrolling channels, how to lose a guy in 10 days. And of course there's the, one of the themes is going to Knicks playoff game together. <laughs> those two, Matthew McConaughey. And I'm like, when was the last time that happened? And then I immediately thought, Hey, now this new movie might get a resurgence, a resurgence <laughs> among Knicks fans because now they can say yeah. they've been in the playoffs recently. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. And Maurice Dottemeyer got that knee knee surgery and all. Oh yeah, and then it was it was the Knicks were also in the uh, Amy Schumer movie as well. So now those <laughs> movies can have a resurgence. Exactly. Um, hey, thank you so much for joining us, Sean. I appreciate it. I think the uh, Suns fans are rooting for the Knicks to do well. It would be so fun to get all the way to the finals, both sides, because you guys had the same kind of resurgence that the Suns did. Yeah. Uh, the Suns, you know, first time in 10 years, the Suns have been in the playoffs. First time in so many years, you guys have been in the playoffs. And going into this next season, both fan bases are feeling like, hey, you know what? I don't care how pessimistic I want to be. This team is really good. Yeah. Both fan bases. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited for both sets of set, both sets of fans. Thank you so much. Tell us where we can find you, Sean. Yeah, just to just to re uh, reiterate, though, we feel the same way. I think a lot of Knicks fans were rooting for the Suns in the playoffs because of that, and, and also the Chris Paul storyline. You know, so many yeah. so many people uh, in New York and New Jersey, Connecticut, just respect the heck out of Chris Paul. And um, but yeah, you can find me on Twitter at s saint j seven. Saint is spelled out. Um, Posting and toasting dot com. Shock shock Knicks podcast. We do uh, shows once a week. They come out Fridays at 9 a.m. on all your podcasting platforms and on postingandtoasting.com. Just click the Shock Jock Knicks podcast logo on the homepage. You can find the latest episode there. And, and Dave, just, again, really appreciate the time. We wish Suns fans the best, and uh, we're looking forward to the season just as much as you guys. And it's, it's a beautiful thing that the Knicks are good, and I'll say because I'm on here, it's a beautiful thing that the Suns are good again as well. It's great to see two really good fan bases, really good franchises on the whole, uh, although James Dolan aside, are, are just happy again and are looking forward to NBA basketball for another season. And uh, especially with COVID, it, it's a beautiful thing as well. And, and again, I really appreciate you having me on. All right. Thank you so much. You have a good day. And uh, Suns fans, you can find me on Dave King NBA on Twitter. You can find all my work on brightsideofthesun.com. And like Sean, our solar panel podcast is also linked onto there as well. If you guys are listening right now, you're already on the feed. But if you want to share it with a friend, just make sure you tell them, uh, look up Sun Solar Panel on the uh, any of the podcast platforms. All right. Thanks a lot, Sean. I appreciate your time. And you all listeners, have a great day. Thanks.